The archives at Brock University were recently gifted a collection of photos and other material by Metroland Media Group, the current owners of the St. Catherine Standard and the Niagara Falls Review. The source dropped in to learn more from archivist David Sharon. There was a room that they called the morgue, and it was just a room full of file cabinets, probably 30 of them. Every drawer was just stuffed with these subject files of everything that happened in Niagara over the last 80 years. So we had the opportunity in, in a week to empty out the morgues, box it all, and transfer it over to Brock. So it was in the middle of a pandemic, so we had to work six feet apart, masks on, doing it as fast as we can, but as we opened every single file, it's like, look at this, look what we have here. There's photos in this one, there's negatives here. All these clippings on the hospital or this person or these major things that happened in Niagara and we knew immediately we had a gold mine of history. You've had this material now for two years and it's probably gonna take you quite a while still to make sure that you've got a handle on everything, am I right? We pulled out 260 plus boxes out of the St. Catherine standards. So uh, it's gonna take us probably two to three more years to really organize things well. Like we have a good sense of where everything is. We did an inventory right off the bat so we can find things quick, but now we're going deep into each file to see what the content is. So it takes time and everyone, there's five of us working in this department. We've all touched this collection in some way, shape or form and we're discovering things every day. So it's, uh, it's fun for us to go through all this material. To learn more about some of the material in the collection, we invited retired standard photographer Dennis Cahill to take a trip down memory lane. It's a real flashback because having left the standard after spending 44 years and coming in and seeing some of the old photos and the clippings, uh, it sure means a lot to me. Um, I worked with a lot of people at the Standard. It was, uh, I think when I started in 65, there was over 230 people working at the Standard. We had our own phone directory. There were so many people. So yeah, coming in here to see what David and his staff has done, it's just incredible. And they rescued these. There's boxes and boxes. Amazing. I know a lot of your work is in the St. Catharines Lock 3 Museum, but are you happy to see this collection take root here at the Brock Archives? I didn't know there was that much to share. Uh, I forgot about our morgue, as we called it, um, with all of the files. There's a lot of um, documents here and some photos. The negatives, of course, uh, were donated uh, by one of the companies that owned us uh, to Lock 3, and they've got their hands full trying to figure out what to do with those and get them online. But uh, no, it's, it, it, there's more than enough to share, I think. You had a little bit of a celebrity in here today with Dennis Cahill, and uh, what was it like seeing his reaction to seeing some of this material and shedding some light on how we got some of those shots and how that paper used to come together? That's what makes this job all worthwhile, is seeing the people who are very familiar with this see it again, and just immediately he went back to Memory Road. and. Uh, the stories he was telling about, oh, when I took this picture, I was doing this and that over there, and it reminded him of another story. And just to hear him talk about how passionate he was about his job, that was just rewarding just to hear him speak. And then you know, he was in the back area, we showed him a few boxes, and he was teaching us how they organized the negatives back in the day. So we learned uh, from him immediately. So that'll help us process those negatives when we get to it. In your eyes as an archivist, how important is this collection to the history of this city and this region? This is the published history of the entire region, so it's fantastic to have. And what it does do, it saves our researchers a lot of time digging through microfilm or looking through the original copies if you can find them. They can go right to the subject that they're looking for. So we're talking days and weeks that can be saved doing research by using these subject files. Already more than 1,500 images have been uploaded to the Brock website via an online exhibit. Visit brockuca library archives to check them out.